Welcome to Live with Aaron and Kelly. I'm here Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly V. Dolan. And we are already cracking up on the show yes, already. Yes, yes. Although the guests on our show today aren't... Very grim. Yeah, they're very grim. They're, <laughs> not, they're not comedians. We are so fortunate to have NBC's Grimm and NBC's Hannibal's talented actors. Yes. We're going to get to them later on, but... Should we let them know who we have? I think we should, just so that okay. they know. Okay, okay. we've okay. got we've got <laughs> later on in the show Aaron Abrams mm. from Hannibal, Ooh. and if you can stomach that show, <laughs> I mean, oh my goodness! And then we've got Russell Hornsby from Grimm and Bitsy Tulick, which we had interviewed last week, but it just fits. Yeah, absolutely, and everybody loves her. Oh my gosh, everyone's been like tweeting even after mm -hmm. we interviewed her. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. People yeah. love her. Yeah, she's yeah. awesome. So Kelly, how was your week? It was fantastic because after we had done. The the show, I actually posted uh, a picture of myself, you, and Jericho Rosales yes. on Instagram. And guess who liked it? Jericho? Bitsy Tulip. No way. Yes. Really? Are you jealous? I know you're jealous. What? Jealous. Just... She hasn't even followed me back. Isn't I that think cool? She... Uh, yeah, she that's kind of cool. She liked the picture. I was that's like, awesome. Yeah. So that was cool. And oh, Celebrity Apprentice. Have you? Did you watch? I didn't. Oh, Aaron! I know. I'm sorry. Okay. I was out. I was out watching The Great Gatsby. I saw that too. Did you? Did oh, you we're like gonna it? Talk. Okay. All right, okay. All right, well, right. Okay. First, Celebrity Apprentice, right. then Great uh, Gatsby, I, aka Leo is going to have my baby. My first. Oh. No, I'm just joking. He's gonna have your baby. How are you gonna manage that? <laughs> That's hilarious. He'll be the first. Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's early, guys. As you know, I get no sleep. You know all those rappers that like rap about that? Uh -huh. like, seriously, that's me. Um, okay, so back Celebrity to Apprentice. Celebrity Apprentice. Okay. Little John uh -huh. got booted off. And yeah. you know I was rooting for oh, him. Oh, I know. I know. I thought you were pretty sad. Because so I, I did see like, your tweet oh, about it. Oh, man. But, you know, I thought it was going to be between Little John and Trace. And it's actually been really fun now that it's with Penn. Well, my that was a, my, that was my call. Yeah. I Penn, called it last week. Penn and Trace are now in the finals. Yeah. And it was really cool. They, they did, like, this ice cream commercial challenge thing. And they brought Gary Busey back, Dennis Rodman, um, who else? Else, um, was it Mary Lou? Oh, you didn't watch. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't I watch. Spoil it too much, but it was really funny, and you can actually buy the ice cream in Walgreens. Oh, so yeah, and cool. I, and Pens was kind of clever. It's called Twirtle. I think Twirtle. it's called Twirtle. So how are they gonna f choose the winner in the end? Are they another big task or no? This is it. That was it. This is it. And so next week will be they'll choose the winner. Oh, so it's between interesting. yeah. So a whole show on. Them then? Yeah. Oh, cool. Have you okay, ever watched right. this show? I have, but I just I, well, that's I forget the ending sometimes. From my from my understanding, okay. well, they'll show like the task, I believe, like the the big like. So who do you yeah. think should win? Um, I don't know. I I always said if if Little John didn't get it, I think Trace would get it. But I will say, Pen. He's smart, man. He has that, really come through. He is on it, and he's entertaining. Yeah, so. and he's not afraid to speak his mind, and he's yeah. and and he's he's really good with everybody else. Like he's that guy's a giant, but you could tell like he's got a big heart too. You yeah, know what I mean, oh, definitely. so um, I'm actually really rooting for Pan. Or go Pan. She's obviously rooting for Trace. So. And I'm also rooting for the Leo in The Great Gatsby. So, what did you think of that? He likes water a lot. In endings. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, come on. He likes water in endings of his movies. Did you notice that? How many? Okay, I know two offhand. Name more than two. Hey, that's that's enough. That's oh, enough. come on. Uh, I get it. Like, obviously, Titanic. And yeah. then this one. <laughs> we just told the whole story to the well, great guests. Well, people, it's a book. Did yeah. you read the book? No. Oh, I think it was. It was the it, first time I'd ever seen that. It was actually mandatory, I think, for us to read the book when we were growing up. Really? One, yeah, but I never read. I never read any Crystal of the Crystal told me the same thing, Crystal Santos. That she never read the book either? She did read the book. Oh. She read like 10 times. Oh, no. I, I didn't read it, but I, oh. I, I remember But you were required, but you did it? Oh, yeah. I went to the library got the book and then didn't read it and filled out a book report <laughs> <laughs> how many of us did that i, I admit we're, we're, it we're, I admit we're it. all raising our hands if you can't watch I us know, and you're just listening but um okay okay so what do you think scale of one to ten ten being the best uh visually a ten plus yeah. story wise i was a little disappointed i give it in seven okay okay what did you give it um, I would say an overall eight and a half. Okay. Visually, again, really great. Um, I mean, I thought Leo looked 
amazing in it. Because he'll have your baby. And, uh, <laughs> and um, Iron Man 3, though, I saw that. And I, I did, give too. That, you did? Okay. Well, Woo! Rocket. Okay, what'd you but think? But not of- together, obviously. So well, we no. never saw it. So, to, so okay. <laughs> well, so did you enjoy it? Yeah, I did. I, I I love Robert Downey Jr. So again, I thought it was really good. And I'm not into the whole Iron Man, um, you know, comic book thing. I've only recently been introduced uh-huh. in the last five years. Uh, I I went to Comic Con and I actually got to interview Stanley. And I I interviewed some of the cast from the original Iron right. Man. Um, Gwyneth so Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow, Terrence Howard, and I actually spoke to Robert Downey Jr. off camera. And I just think he's so charming. I I like. Um, um, well, there's one moment that I really like in the film, and it's when she puts on the armor. And oh, she's like, bam! Yeah, that That's was cool. That's one of cool. my favorite. That was one of my favorite parts. And then I kind of predicted the end. I I knew she didn't. Yeah, of you course. Know? Yeah, I think everybody so, kind of felt yeah, that. I knew it. I was like, there's no way. Come yeah, on, come on. So yeah. what did you think of Iron Man? Scale of oh, 1 to 10. Oh, uh, 10. My mom fell asleep on it, though. Yeah, see, I, and again, I think that's why <laughs> if, if, you, if you don't have something interesting like in front of you, it, you can kind of get bored with it. So if you're not a Robert Downey Jr. fan, like I, I couldn't watch Iron Man if it was anybody else. I think it was her pain pills. She just recently got her t- oh. tooth uh, <laughs> well, ejected. That, well, so. yeah, yeah. Drugs will yeah. make you pass it wasn't out a good a idea. To take her to see Iron Man while she's drugged up. Aww. So, but you know, but and I enjoyed every minute of it. Of course, it. and you're an Iron Man fan. Absolutely. Now, now, you know who I went with. Who did I go with to see that movie? I forget. But they brought up an interesting point, and they said, uh, "Oh no, somebody else brought up the point." I forget, you guys. It's early in the morning. Forgive me. But they kept making reference to what happened in New York, which is yes, what Avengers. Was, it was the Avengers, but yet. When the whole thing went down this time in Iron Man 3, he never picked up the phone to call anybody to help. Like, I think they should have dressed that. He can't. Why? Well, actually, he did. You didn't stay till the very, very oh, end. Oh, no, did I did. You? I oh. did. I did. Well, then there you go. That was after the fact, after he had done everything. Because technically... He's a that, lone wolf. Okay. Well, that, I thought that was an interesting point. But anyways, and this person's like a, a, like a comic book, like, follows the stories and follows... Iron Man. But you know, I mean, it's Iron Man. So it's not <laughs> it's not Thor Iron Man. It's not Hulk fire. Although they did bring in a little Hulk. We need to take a quick break and when we come back, we will have Russell Hornsby of Grimm. Stay tuned. <laughs> with Aaron and Kelly. Well, Russell Hornsby. That's right. From Grimm, all you Grimm fans, this is what you've been waiting for. Here it is. Welcome to Live with Aaron and Kelly. I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly V. Dolan. And we have, that's right, from Grimm, Russell Hornsby. Russell, welcome to the show. Thank you, Aaron and Kelly. So happy to be here. Well, we're really excited. You know, everybody's been talking about Grimm. We actually interviewed Bitsy just like a week ago, and we've got so many people on Twitter and Facebook that are like, I love this show. This is awesome. So (laughs) what does it feel to be part of all of this crazy awesomeness? Don't wake me because I'm dreaming. I swear. (laughs) That's what it feels like. Uh, It's... I mean, honestly, I I can't explain it. It's like one of those things where, as an actor, you always sort of dream of being on that that, that hit show, you know, Mm -hmm. that sort of that uh, that weekly food that the audience just loves. And, uh, you know, I think I've struck, I mean, I think I struck gold with with him. And just in in that people genuinely enjoy you know enjoy the show i mean we when you always you have friends who've seen you you know work and stuff like that and then you tell them to watch a show that you're in they go okay i'll watch it just because you're in it and then when they watch it come back and they say hey man I, this is i like this this is so fantastic <laughs> right it's you know it's just something and uh you know i mean i have kids coming up to you i have parents i have grandparents 
coming up now. I love this show. In the back, go give me a hug and a kiss. Uh, you know, that, that's I mean, awesome. We get so much blood in the airport, train stations, restaurants. Uh, and again, it's, it's that kind of, it, it's, they're, they're genuine fans. They're not like starstruck sort of fans. They're just genuine grimsters or gremlins or grimites or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> but they're really sort of into the, the mythology of the show and into the world of the show. And that's what I feel is I appreciate and respect more than anything is that it's not, it's not just about like them seeing me, Hank or Russell. It's like, hey, I see you're one of the actors from Grimm. Tell me about the show. Tell me what's going to happen next. Let's talk about what happened with Juliet. And let's talk about what happened with you and Evelyn. And when you kissed the girl and this happened and it's gone. You can't remember anything. It, oh, a, what's going to happen next? You just took all of our questions away I from know, us. It's so funny, Russell. <laughs> I can hear the excitement in your voice. And I'm sure like fans are so excited when they see you. But you know what people have been wondering about? Because recently it's been on Twitter. Twitter. Did something happen? Did you hurt yourself with your Achilles tendon? Oh, no, no. I, I ruptured my Achilles. It was not a little boo-boo. It was, oh. it, it was a big oh type of injury. What happened? And, uh, it hurt. Like, I, I was watching the Super Bowl. I, I mean, oh. I was, you know, and, and the thing is, I am, Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I cannot watch the Super Bowl with you, ever. Like... What, did you just have, like, a little, like, halftime game, and, and you went outside in, in the backyard and played with... No, what? no, well, I, I, you know what? I wish. But I, I, I'm an actor participant when I watch the game. I don't sit down. My full, I'm from Oakland originally, so my 49ers were in the, in, the, in the Super Bowl, and I'm rooting for them. And it was fourth and four. They're going, they're ready to go to the field goal. They, they go for a fake. The 49ers stop them just short of the first down marker. And I went and did a plie, jump for joy, Toyota. Oh, what a feeling. It was fantastic. And I came down on my right foot, snap, crackle, pop, and I was down to the count. And um, there, was, there was pain like you wouldn't believe. And, and you know, and what messed it up is I was stone cold sober with it, so I re it really hurt. Oh. And, uh, that, you know what? And, and so, and luckily for myself, my wife was with me, and, uh, and I stayed and watched the whole game before I went to the emergency room. Oh, my God. Because You're I thought I figured it was my point I was to come back. How did you explain and then all that? All of a sudden, when the game was over. Yeah, when the game. I'm sorry. When the game was over. Well, when the game was over, I, it hurt even more because you know my Ford had just lost. Oh, uh, <laughs> I can't and believe I, that. That it shows that you're a dedicated fan. That you sat through through that pain before the game was over. Before you went and like tended to it. I can't believe that. Well, well, you, well, you know, they told me there was a nurse present, and she said. Listen, there's no, the doctor, all the doctor's going to do is give you some pain medicine, give you a boot, and tell you to, you know, go home. So you, 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 can't, do, you can't injure it any worse than it already is. <laughs> okay, I'll wait till the game's over. That's you know? hilarious. And, and, and you, you think about it, but who, who wants to sit in the waiting room, emergency room on Super Bowl Sunday? <laughs> Certainly not I. <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, how did that affect, I mean, when, when you had to call into the Grimm, you know, producers and say, by the way, I, I'm going to be out of commission for a bit. I mean, did that, did it they was change a Super it around? Bowl accident. I know. It's like when a woman gets pregnant, they, they, now they, they have to they, write they it in. They changed it around. They changed it around? Yeah, no, no, they, they really did. They were, uh, they were very understanding and very gracious about it. And, you know, this stuff happens. I mean, I guess fortunately for me. I no, don't know. no, wait, wait, wait. Russell, Russell did this you does just, not did, did happen. Did you just say that this, this kind of thing happens? Because I, this is not something that I have is, never is, heard is of a every... Super Bowl. Achilles Injury. tendon pull, yeah, and there was no well, like no, physical but, but see, Not a pull. I, it, a, well, a well that's the thing. You have to be. You have to. They have to look at it and from a positive standpoint of you know what this stuff happens. I think it would have been worse if I was trying to be a weekend warrior and out skiing and you know mm -hmm. doing Spartan races and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, because then you're like you're not really thinking about your job and sure. you know everything like that. Yeah, hey, I was just like. I was just jumping for joy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh, I'm gonna tweet. I'm gonna tweet something. You just gave me an idea. I'm totally gonna tweet something. Okay. All right. You'll see it later on. It'll be hilarious. It'll make you laugh. 
Um, speaking, at, at, oh. I'm at Russell Hornsby. Perfect. You know, and, and speaking of Twitter, we had a ton of questions. Um, like I said before, people are fans of this show, and we had a ton of people chime in as far as Twitter. Uh, it was really cute. Uh, let's see, we've got... Uh, uh, Mon Rosales said, I also want to know if he reads fan fiction. Fan fiction? I yes. No. I guess I have to check it out. Well, right. I, apparently not. Another another person said, um, tell him that he's awesome on the show. That's Harmony. Um, I'm going to pronounce this wrong. Naginawine. Harmony Naginawine said, tell him he's awesome on the show. Uh, we've also got uh, someone from Australia that's watching and uh, wants to know if you're going to come to Sydney anytime soon. Well, you know, it's interesting. My wife and I, we, went to, we were in Sydney back in 2009 for our honeymoon. Uh, we, have a, we have a couple of friends in Melbourne. But I have been to Sydney. It is on our list to go back and visit some of our friends. So, yes, you will see us soon. Now, this comes from uh, Judy Atkins. Uh, if you were not a cop on the show, would you like to be a Vessin? And if so, which one? Uh, I, no, I would not like to be a Vessin. <laughs> At least he's honest. I, I, like, I like to remain in my twin <laughs> form. I, I know I'm going to get this name wrong. Uh, we have a question. Do you want the grim life to be real? And I believe, Aaron, can you help me with that's this name? That's from Sifa Fauzia Hasnil. I Gosh, don't know. we are bad with the I names know. here. Well, that's kind of a hard name, to, but okay, there but, we go. But that's do you want the grim life to be real? Well, you know, it's interesting when you say that. Uh, when, they, when they ask that, I've seen the grim life in a in matter of speaking. I, I grew up in Oakland, California, and, uh, I, you know, I saw some of the worst, uh, you know, just like it. I've seen aspects of it, so I don't, I don't need to see it anymore, so no. Mm. Okay, well, at least he's honest. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely get that. Who wants to see, like, the negative parts? So right? the season finale, <laughs> what, what can we look forward to? Um, the scene, well, this week, tonight's show at, at 10 o'clock uh, on, on NBC, we're, we're talking, it's, it's the name of the show is Walking Dead. We're dealing with zombies. Mm -hmm. And there is th this great um, a, a character um, called the Cat Crachet Mortel. And he's like, he's the opposite of GE. He brings bad things to life. Oh. And uh, so it'll be it'll be really really interesting um, for the show tonight, and, uh, and then everybody will have to stay tuned for next week. Awesome! Very and then cool. and, and Bitsy, she's remembering. That's awesome. We're so happy for her now. <laughs> yes, yes, she is. She is. She's remembering, and they 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 take an opportunity to she finally get to see a uh, a woo a woo game where they transform in front of her. She, she, she's let in on the secret as well. Ooh. All right. Very cool. We will definitely be watching. Yeah, <laughs> we're not going to miss that. We'll have to see how she reacts to that. Yeah, Okay, definitely. awesome. Thank you so very much for taking a moment with us, Russell. And any last-minute uh, words for, for, your, for fans. your fans? Just, uh, just, we, I appreciate your support. Thank you so much for helping to uh, make Grimm one of the most successful shows on television. Thank you all. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, that was uh, Russell Hornsby. That's right, from NBC's Grimm. We got a chance to talk to him and catch up with him. And, you know, I, I love the story about the Super Bowl. I, I did not say. expect. Well, it's funny because there were little rumors going online that he had done it on the set. Yeah, I so wasn't I think sure. this and is a breaking know. news. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't know it was so long ago. Uh huh. I yeah. didn't know that. So, yeah. yeah. But I mean, how long does it take to repair that? I oh. I don't. They think say you, that's one of the most uh, most I, painful injuries. I don't think you ever fully recover from doing that because I I think like once it's torn or ruptured, granted you can get back to normal, but it's still like tender right. now once it's been ruptured or right. whatever yeah i'm trying to act like i know what i'm talking you about. know i broke my call <laughs> you know come to think of it i did break my collarbone during in living color 
I did. While watching In Living Color? Me and my friends were, were wrestling in between the breaks oh, watching In Living me. Color and all it. And oh my gosh. While you broke your collarbone, I was break dancing. Cause I That's remember awesome. I, was, I used to watch In Living Color and I'm like, oh my God, I want to be a fly girl. Oh my God. That's that's all I ever thought about. I didn't eat, I barely even watched the sketches. Really? I would just wait for the dancers just to wait for the, and there was And one, I couldn't wait for the dancers to get off. I'm oh like, my, come on, get on with the show. Are you crazy? Well, now I understand oh coming from a goodness. dancer, but I and just you thought were like a, a young boy. Well, you didn't I, enjoy the dancing. I, well, they were okay, but you were, Jim you, Carrey. I was always looking forward to Jim Carrey. I, I thought they were all talented, but you know it's interesting because probably at that stage you hadn't really hit. You know, you know. Oh that no, stage I hit it. Oh, I hit it. Oh yeah. But you didn't like the girls. Not no, not dancing like that. Oh. Do anything for me. I'm confused. All right, we're gonna go to break. When we get back, we'll have more with Live with Aaron and Kelly. <laughs> Welcome back to Live with Aaron Kelly. Well, we're going to stick with that theme of grim. I'm not sure that they, <laughs> that they do that on the it's show. It's like old time radio, you know? Like, I got to give it like this feeling for those who, of, who are listening. Uh -huh. It's like every time I think of Graham or Hannibal, it's like, mwahaha. <laughs> okay. Uh, a Vessin, if you were able to be any Vessin, what type of Vessin would you be? What type of animal? I think, I don't know if they have this already on the show, but I think uh, like a Black Panther. Black Panther? Yeah, like a panther. You know your whole face has to shift into a panther. I think it would be beautiful. You'd what, be a what beautiful would you blonde be? panther? A, a beautiful blonde black panther. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I've seen one, but yeah, sure. Jose Luis, our cameraman, what would you be? A big black kitty cat. Aww. Why, We'd all, be in the same family. All black kitty cats? What about you? What would you? I'd be a dolphin. I he love dolphins! All right, I'm just saying. Let's go to let's go to Pitsy right now. That explains a lot. Welcome to Live with Aaron and Kelly. It's that time I've been waiting for. Bitsy Tolik is on the phone with us. That's right, from Grimm, from the artist, and from her new movie. Bitsy, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. First of all, I gotta say we got a lot of stuff in common, and we gotta talk about this. Number one, you're half <laughs> Spanish, right? Well, my mom's, yeah, my mom's family is basically Spanish, and then I think my great-grandmother was Mexican. Okay. Oh. But yeah, I mean. Our, our cameraman's uh, uh, rooting for you right there. And then you went to Harvard. We have Harvard family. My, my uncle, uh, which is behind the camera, he went to Harvard, and so did my uh, brother. So tell us about Harvard. So Crimson. Harvard was great. I had a, I had a wonderful four years there. Um, you know, it's, the campus was amazing, and the resources that were available to the students were amazing. But I definitely will always say that the best thing about about going to Harvard with the other students is very inspiring and sometimes intimidating. And right. I feel like a lot of us were used to being um, sort of big fish in a little pond, and then you get to a school like that, and all of a sudden you're like, do I deserve to be here? <laughs> Uh, but it was great. Hi, Bitsy. It's Kelly here with Live with Aaron and Kelly. You know, we tweeted and Facebooked that we were going to be interviewing you. And I cannot tell you how many people reached out to us. They had so many questions for you. So I want to go to a couple of questions that we had on Twitter. We had AJ Arthur um, said that Bitsy has a degree in literature. What genre does she enjoy reading the most? Uh, of just any literature. Mm -hmm. Actually, I've, I've sort of been lately on a nonfiction phase. Okay. Um, the book that I have that I'm staring at right now on my bedside table is called Natasha's Dance, Dance, which is a cultural history of Russia. And then the one I was reading before that was called The Emperor of All Maladies, which is considered a sort of biography of cancer. 
Um, and then before that, I was reading this really trippy novel called by Thomas Pynchon called Inherent Vice. So I don't know if I have a favorite. I'm sort of all over the map. I just love reading. Wow. So I, I, I mean, that's pretty... I, I, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to admit it. A smart girl, a beautiful well, it's woman. Because Bitsy, w- <laughs> Aaron was so excited about this interview because he's like, she's smart and she's pretty. That's like, a deadly combo. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find that a lot of people are surprised that you're actually intelligent because you, you are a very attractive girl? Do you get mixed reactions from that? Because I've seen some um, interviews and you're a very intelligent girl. <laughs> Thank you. Well, listen, I will say this. I am probably the dumbest smart person ever. I have very little common sense, and I you know, I tend to get in my head a lot. So I don't know if I necessarily am reading immediately like somebody hyper-intelligent, because I could be a little goofy. That's even um, more adorable. You know, though, Bitsy, I, know, I actually know that you can be a bit goofy, because I did a little research on you, and I saw in an interview you enjoy, like, fart and poop jokes is this true oh that is so true it's they're my favorite i mean it's probably because i have a dog now and he's always farting in my face tell us and, about your dog you i just know, saw I'm, pictures of your dog you have two do you have two dogs no i have one okay just one his what? name is henry um and he's a three-year-old brindle french bulldog and he's so much fun. So adorable. You majored in literature, you majored in the arts, and and then you came out here, from what I understand, just to get away from the, the academic world, to kind of relax, and then what happened with acting? I sort of um, fell into it, and I, you know, I was going to a theater class with a friend. I was dating a musician in L.A., and I kind of just fell into it. I'd never really done anything before. I did one little thing in college, but it was never something I intended to do. So I actually started sort of late in the grand scheme of things, Mm -hmm. and uh, I totally fell in love. And it was just one of those weird serendipitous things where, you know, I was fell into the hands of the right teacher, and if it had been anybody else, I would never have considered doing this. But... Uh, she made me fall in love with acting, and I studied for a couple of years, and then um, I started auditioning and working. Well, and I literally, now that I'm doing it, I can't imagine doing anything more fun. Neither can we, because, I mean, the love for you is just phenomenal. Grim fans are tweeting us left and right, asking questions. This is from Amanda Frazier. Are you going to have it in for Adeline? I would have... I would be shocked if I don't, because obviously Juliet is still in the middle of getting all of her memories back, and uh-huh. it, you know it's not coming together easily. And it's like it's like basically a million piece puzzle. And but but it's starting to come back together, and I am sure that Juliet is going to end up remembering or piecing together the fact that Adeline had something to do with with this. Now you you've been kind of strung along left and right. You're like. The Lois Lane to Clark Kent, you know, you, you, you can't find out his identity practically. I mean, otherwise you end up in trouble. So, I mean, you're getting you're getting sent left, you're getting sent right. Um, what's that journey been like for, for your acting? You know, you don't know what you're going to be or doing next. Um, it's been really fun. You know, uh, this season has been a wild ride for me, and I, it, it's been challenging and, and it's been really fun it was the first time i really had to use a lot of green screen and when you're working with green screen you're literally you you only have your imagination so it, it's a different kind of prep work um than going into a scene with another actor where you can sort of react and just listen to somebody and be present and when you know all of the stuff with juliet um when once rosalie gave her the spell and her memory was coming back right um, all the stuff with the abyss and whatnot, that, that wasn't even a green screen. That was just walking into my the, the set for J- Nick and Juliet's house and basically falling into the floor. But I could see the floor. So is that kind of thing where really, you know, you, you have to make it as truthful as possible in a scenario which is just not truthful at all. But it's been really fun. And, and you know, this, this business with the amnesia was really fun to play with, but... It's funny, like the two of them, Nick and Juliet, you would, they, they're just like total star-crossed lovers. And in the episode that airs tonight, The Kiss of the Muse, 
It has a great guest star, Nora Zahetner from Heroes, and she's a, a sort of muse like Stefan. I who can't wait. Nick comes under her spell. I'm huge on, I mean. Yeah, just when Juliet is finally starting to have positive memories. Okay. And now, now, well. Well, hey, first That's of all, congratulations on season three being picked up. That must be exciting That's for huge. you guys. Thank you. And so the season finale, can you can you give us any little teasers? Well, obviously there will be a cliffhanger, as usual. It is a season finale. And I, by the way, as an also a fan of Grimm, can, I'm, I'm always like, ah, oh, no, what happens next? <laughs> um, but it's a big one. It's definitely, it's a little bit of a doozy. Like, one of one of the main characters, uh, it is questionable how alive he is at the end of, at the end of this one. We have one more question we want to go to on Twitter. Gary Murano, um, at Super PR Guy, asked... Bitsy, how do you think or hope Juliet will kill her first evil Vessen? And will it happen soon? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of funny. I can't say what kind of Vessen, but we were filming one of the in, the, in the season finale. Actually, the last two episodes are going to be like a, a two-parter, and there was, there was a Vessen, and I was desperately trying to convince the director that I should just totally kick him in the nuts really, really hard and yeah. kick him out. And, like, literally, I, I couldn't let it go. And I think it was because in a very early draft, I did that, and then it was it was removed because, you know, the, the stuff ends up getting cut down, especially these, these last few episodes are just epic. Right. And I was like, well, wait, whoa, 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 wait, where, where do I kick him in the balls? Like, when does that happen, guys? And they're like, well, you're not doing that anymore. And I was like, no, 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 I'm doing it. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. So hopefully at some point in season three, they will let me do that now just because it's created a fixation. I uh, love it. So you're 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 looking forward to that moment. Let's just say that, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, again, you have so many fans out there. What's something that you you want to tell them? Because I know we can't get to all the questions that are on Twitter and Facebook. What's a few words that you'd like to say to them for those who are watching and listening? I have to say that I I love you guys and I I really appreciate the dedication and the loyalty. And you know, I, I, as I've said in numerous interviews, I feel like. Fans of this sort of genre are super, super smart. They're super loyal. They're amazing. They really watch the show with an eye for detail and an eye for story. And I th I like that. It keeps you on your toes. And I try to, one of the reasons I try to be so active on Twitter is it's sort of a way, way that I can interact with them and also just say thanks and, you know, hear pictures from set or you know, make sure you're watching tonight, and sometimes I, I live tweet uh, episodes with them. And it's really just because we wouldn't, we wouldn't be here without the fans, and I'm hyper aware of that. I so appreciate that. I think she was only talking to me, fans. I don't. I'm not sure she was talking to all of you, but uh, <laughs> I just Aaron's, Aaron's like, oh, she's talking directly to me right now. <laughs> no, but that's great. You, and, and your fans love you and adore you. We could tell. Yeah, and you know, I have one more question for you. What are you watching besides uh, Grimm? What What's your favorite show right now? Um, well, I've really been I've really gotten into Hannibal on NBC. Brian Fuller's new show with Mads Mikkelsen and Hugh Dancy. I think it's really it's really scary. It's beautifully lit. Um, <sighs> the performances are awesome. So yeah, I, I would recommend cool. that everybody watches uh, Hannibal. That's so funny because I had I saw that on Twitter and I was like, oh, I completely agree. And the the coloring, the cinematography on that thing is beautiful. I mean, it's, it's just gorgeous. gorgeous. It is. It's one of like the the prettiest and most visually interesting shows I've seen in a while. Love it. Awesome. Well, thank you so very and much. And of course, I watch like Game of Thrones and everything. Like everybody else, I'm obsessed with games, Game of yeah. Thrones. But of the new ones, I'm really into Hannibal. Very okay, cool. you know what? Now I'm going to get HBO and watch Game of Thrones, and we're going to tweet live on uh, during that. There we go. Okay, we'll have a party I'm just for saying. It. <laughs> All right, thank you so very much for taking a moment with us. We we're sorry we only get our ten minutes with you, but thank you, Bitsy, and congratulations on all you're doing. Absolutely, and thank you for having me. 
So Bitsy Tolick, brains, beauty. That's right. That's why we had to show the interview again. Yeah. We had to do an encore for you guys because we had so many people tweeting and Facebooking us. Oh, like, I loved oh it. Oh, my God. Yeah. And, yeah, she's awesome. And the fact that she likes, uh, well, now I've got to see that HBO Game of Thrones. I still have not. I, I, I'm waiting for it to come to Netflix. But mm-hmm. anyway, but her other favorite is Hannibal. <laughs> And when we get back, we have Aaron Abrams from Hannibal. Stay tuned right after this. Welcome back to Live with Aaron and Kelly. I am so excited about this interview because I actually watch Hannibal and it is shot so beautifully. I just love it. And your girl Bitsy likes it too. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> I have to say I'm not, uh, I don't watch Hannibal because it, I don't know. There's the whole eating of people that. It's a little disturbing. I'm a queasy per. I, I get queasy <laughs> very easy. If, if I just see a cut, I get queasy. So it's kind of disturbing. But Aaron Abrams. That's right. Check it out. Welcome to Live with Aaron and Kelly, and it's what you guys have been waiting for. We know we've got a lot of Hannibal fans out there, and yes, we have Aaron Abrams on the line. Are you there, Aaron? I am. How are you guys? Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're, absolutely. We're, we're so excited to have you, but before we jump into this interview, i got to ask you, why is everybody from Canada so freaking cool? <laughs> you know, I feel like if I answered that question, I would cease to be cool. It's like a catch twenty three, <laughs> where if I catch twenty two, rather, where if I, if I, uh, you know, it's, yeah, I can't take any credit. I think it's just maybe it's something in the water up there. You can't take credit for in the entirety of Canada. Come on, dude. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I am their ambassador. You are their ambassador. Ah, okay. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so we have a ton of Hannibal fans out there. What's it been like working with? the entire cast um brian who is just Mm -hmm. a freaking genius what's it been like working with everyone brian fuller the showrunner is is, is, i mean he's beyond a showrunner he's sort of like just a visionary so he he paints amazing pictures i mean the show is visually just unbelievable and uh, there's no detail left uh, I think that anybody who sees the show knows what I'm talking about. I mean, every where everything is placed, how every every color of every prop. So it's sort of just uh, an amazing looking show. And uh, you know, you're working, you're showing up, and you're working with people like Lawrence Fishburne every day, who are just like they're powerhouse people. Do you ever it, ask it, him? It's, it's really a dream come true. Do you ever ask him whether whether he would take the red or the green pill? I'm just asking. I just I, I do not. I do not. <laughs> I don't. I don't call him Larry. I don't do any of that. <laughs> okay. He's, uh, That's awesome. He is, he, he, He's 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 a straw. He's 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 a present. He's a present. But certainly, my character gets up in his face quite a bit. I, I, I think you should throw it out the there. Bird. Just just stump him. Stump him. Yeah. Once. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see it on the blooper reel. Uh, now, you've worked with Hetian Park. We've interviewed her. She's yeah. been on our show uh, a couple weeks ago. You know, what's it like working with her? She's so fun. I mean, she's great. I, I think that Brian's done a good job putting together some people who have uh, some comedy backgrounds. He has a lot of them on the show, myself and Scott Thompson and, and Hetty. And, and he has uh, people coming on as, as villains like Eddie Izzard and Molly Shannon. And, and so it, it's really just sort of a – he adds levity to how dark and macabre the show is. So it, it adds a nice uh, lightness, and it's that way on set as well. I mean, everybody's really there to work, but at the same time, that, that lends itself. For, for for people like Hetty and Scott Thompson to run around and and, and be be idiots. 
Yeah. You know, it's funny because I, I was researching you before we went into this interview, and I didn't realize what a, a comedy background you, you have. Um, and I want to ask you about one of your projects. W young people, I'll say effing for Aaron's looking at me like, don't say it, don't say it. We don't need it. any fines we, on we this show. We can't, we can't, we can't <laughs> afford them. Okay, so what? I know that was a few years ago, but two questions for you. What is your actual comedy background? Like, how did you get into it? And then also this film, what, what in the world is this about? <laughs> well, what do you think it's about? <laughs> <laughs> Libraries well, I and think books. What it's and... about is pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> I mean, what is this? It's, it takes place in some bedrooms. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, at the end of the day, it's, it's kind of like a love actually, only every story is very much about sex, and so it's sort of a romantic comedy that's sort of very frank and uh, R-rated. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a very funny movie that I, I, you know, I, I really love being uh, involved with. So I, I certainly suggest everybody check that out. As far as comedy background, I mean, I don't know. It's sort of, I, I've done a bit of everything, and the comedy background, it's just I've been fortunate enough to sort of do a bunch of different roles, and, 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 and now to be on Hannibal, I'm just sort of double fortunate. Were you always like that? I mean, as a child, were you always just... You were funny, uh, yeah. What, what, what would your parents get mad at you, or would your teachers? Get <laughs> I, mad I at was you? more. I would say I was more of an, a, 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 a totally annoying child. <laughs> I, I was like a lot of look at me, look at me. I think those guys either <laughs> develop into very annoying humans, or they uh, somebody eventually tells them they're annoying and they, they have to go harness that energy and put it somewhere mm. and maybe be like, oh, if I want all this attention, maybe I should go to an acting class and figure it out how to, how to, how to earn it. You know, speaking of acting classes, you went to the Goodman School of Drama in Chicago? Is that true? Uh, yes, yes. So, okay, I'm from Chicago. With so, go ahead. No, 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 go. You go. Oh, okay. Well, uh oh, thank Chicago's you. Well, thank in you. the house. <laughs> um, how, did, how long were you in Chicago actually living there? I lived there for about five years. And, uh, from I graduated in 2001. And did you develop the love for the Chicago sports teams? No pressure. Oh, I was a huge Answer. Cubs fan. I was a beer vendor at yeah. Wrigley during. Shut I was there up. That, yeah, oh man, especially during the year when I was going Sosa and McGuire were going back and forth with the home run lead. Oh, it my was God, uh, amazing. Because so I was only doing it for. Yeah, and I had my own beer too. Because you have to develop your own chant in there to stand out. <laughs> well, Everybody's of got their own like. And mine was uh, I went with uh, beer, 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 beer. That I was think my, I remember, remember you. That I think that I remember me. being completely wasted. <laughs> I think I remember you. <laughs> I want beer just That's hearing right. that now. <laughs> you and me both. I would get drunk off my own beer and just start saying ridiculous. I'd be like, Doctor Beer with prescriptions for beer. I just walk. I was also the drunk beer fan. Was that place? That place was like a huge party. Like nobody watched the games. Like I swear, like Cubs fans never go to watch. The game's really? like, oh, it's a big party. It's oh like a big goodness. frat party. It's, it's really the best sporting event you can go to. It I mean, is. everybody's talking to everyone. It's like a mingler. It's it great. Is. It is. It wow. is. Inspiration for why people are not expecting the Cubs to win. <laughs> you said what? Pardon me? I said, certainly they're not expecting the Cubs to win. So no, they're, doing they're, something, they're doing other things. That clearly are. not. Clearly <laughs> not. Um, you know, it's funny because we interviewed um, Bitsy Tulloch from NBC's Grimm, and we asked her what she's watching other than her own show, and she said Hannibal, and then me and her got into it about the look of it and mm -hmm. how amazing it is. What other shows are you watching besides Hannibal? Uh... Um, I, I just finished House of Cards, which I, I really love. And, uh, you know, s serialized shows like that are, are, are so addicting. Yeah. And, you know, Hannibal's, Hannibal's one of those as well. It just it gets to the point where you're halfway through and there's so many balls in the air. And, and you're wondering just how the, the show can pause. Like, you know, Kevin Spacey on that show has got so many so many things uh, on his back that you, you just don't understand how he's going to get out from under it at the end of it. And that's the kind of, kind of engrossing stuff. That you just get addicted where you're just watching one after the other after the other. It's like candy. You just can't stop. Yeah, no, definitely. Now, you said in an interview that Brian Fuller constantly surprises not only his audience, but, you know, you guys as actors. What are some surprises ahead in Hannibal? Uh, yeah, you keep asking me these, these, these are sort of a catch-22 question. Yeah. If I say it, it seems to be surprising a little bit. <laughs> but, I mean, there's certainly, I mean, 
He's got guest stars coming in all the time. So, I mean, this week, Julian Anderson comes back. It's the yes. first time on Primetime Television in over 10 years. I, it is. I mean, we're talking television event stuff. I am stoked by that. You, When I saw that, I was like, oh, oh my God. I mean, X-Files, I didn't miss one episode. <laughs> Aaron is very excited. Both she, Aaron's. <laughs> yes, as well. He should be. I am excited. Yeah. I mean, it's just great. And she, so she's there. And Lance Henriksen is coming out of the future episode where he was Bishop and Aliens. And, uh, I, mean, I mean, it's sort of... Uh, uh, just one after the other after the other of, of amazing guest stars. I mean, that's certainly um, some surprises. And, and that, if, if people have seen previous episodes, you know, Eddie Izzard and Molly Shannon showing up and playing crazed serial killers is also surprising in itself. Comedians do a really good job at that, of harnessing oh, yeah. that crazy but still, you know, somewhat sane. <laughs> <laughs> Enough to be crazy, you know? Well, comedians got a little crazy in them. Yeah, I guess In a so. good way, in a good way, right? <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. There's certainly something behind their eyes that's like, uh, that's, that's wired different, and you I, can sort of smell it on them. Yeah, I want to ask, uh, now, you are busy, you said earlier, you know, how the show's juggling a lot of balls in the air. It seems like you're doing quite a lot of the same thing yourself. You've got the L.A. Complex for the CW, you wrote that and co-executive produced that. Uh, you know, TV, film, where producing, do you... Producing, yeah. Yeah, you're producing... Being a comedian, practically. How do you how do you, how balance? Do you balance that? Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's 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 tough. I mean, those are it's it's great to just do a bunch of different stuff. I mean, that sort of keeps you that's what keeps you balanced a little bit. It, it's running around. To, it, 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 it doesn't. It's great to be busy, and then when you're busy with a bunch of different jobs like that, it's just uh, it, it's always a joy. I, I'm really just fortunate. I mean, the, the, the LA Complex thing has done that. It, it was. Uh, it went two seasons, and so now I can I sort of just focusing on Hannibal, and and you know I'm on downtime now, so I'm doing uh, you know I get to do like I get to go back to writing and try and uh, get another movie made and see what happens there, but I, you know I'm just uh, I don't know say, like I just really. Uh, I, I kind of want to do everything, and I, I'm not—I'm not one of those guys who's comfortable sitting still. So uh, you do realize that know, means you're to be on a show like this. And, you yeah. do realize that means you are—that's yeah. not downtime, right? That—that's—that's that's up in. The, <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Well, some people yeah. are. Well, some different, different people are style like of that. time. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Well, we will be watching tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, Hannibal, and every single Thursday. Huge shout out to Aaron Abrams. Congratulations on all your success, ma'am. Guys, thanks so much for having me. You're the best. Thank you. You too, Aaron. Especially with that name. Aaron. <laughs> okay, thank you. All thanks, right, thank bye. You. <laughs> That's right. That was so much fun. And I love the fact that he worked at Wrigley Field. My favorite field. Chicago. Yes, favorite baseball team. Chicago Cubs. When's the last time you went to a game? Last time I went was probably two summers ago. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You're a recent... More recent than me. I think I haven't been to the Dodgers in 10 years. Oh, horrible. I know. It's horrible. Bad. We have to make up for it. Definitely. That was a great show. We had a lot of guests. Yes, a lot of more ha -ha guests. <laughs> Both Grimm and Hannibal <laughs> on NBC. And that was pretty brave of us to do that. I know, uh, right? Grimm we never, I know, we and never he, go Both of us like are that. kind of like scared of this yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's hilarious. Well, you know, maybe the next show, we're going to turn it a little lighter on with music next week. Sounds good. Going to have a musical guest, and uh, we want you to chime in with whatever questions you have. We always try to put it to you first, right? That's right. Make sure you guys follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Kelly V. Dolan and Aaron M. Sanchez. And you can catch us on AaronandKellyLive.com. Check us out on both our iTunes, our YouTube, anywhere you can find We're us. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. Mikasa Broadcasting, jazz thank you. NBC News <laughs> Radio, thank you. For those of you guys listening, I'm doing jazz hands. All right, let's do the jazz hands on the way out. Ready? <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Bye, see you guys.